Hello, thank you for checking out my video today. In today's video, I'm going to talk about uh, kind of an update to my project. I've created a 10 slot uh, main board for the project. Uh, I still get a lot of emails from people wanting more card slots. And I realize with these older uh, PC type boards, that's kind of how you expanded your board for more parallel ports, serial ports, or whatever you wanted to add was through the ISA bus. With the uh, current design, after you add in your processor and DMA controller memory and a video card, that leaves you with uh, three card slots. So this, the intent is to leave you with six card slots after you have added all your, um, your, your processor, your DMA controller memory, and a video card. So, the main reason why I went with 10, uh, not 12 or 16, there is a limit to the size. And I think this one's kind of pushing it. I'll explain that in a bit. But the other thing is I wanted to have seven slots. This goes into a standard ATX case. I wanted to have the seven slots line up with card slots in the back. Um, these I've just shifted over. And if you notice, there's no bracket because there is no bracket for them to, to screw to. These are just the regular cards just without a bracket. Um, I had considered just putting everything on the motherboard and you know that's is an option but it's like well why not stick with the, the uh, modular design and just slide it over which uh, simplified uh, the design quite a bit. Uh, it also allows for changing out the processor with the V40 card. So for those who have not uh, seen this before, I'm going to explain it real quick. And then I'm going to show it in the case and I'm going to boot it up and uh, kind of do a little demo on it, see if it still works. So your main board, as you can tell, is nothing but just an expanded uh, board of my 7 slot. But you've got, uh, on board, you've got your, your keyboard con controller here, keyboard port, a uh, Port E0, that's where we put our uh, CH376. Um, got port 61 here. And that that is used, you know, with the keyboard controller and uh, the speaker enabled. Down here we've got a clock with a 14.31818 uh, crystal. And this creates the, the click on the ISA for your uh, DMA card, so that, that's your bus speed. Got a clock divider here, which is used to provide the clock to the keyboard controller. And then the remainder chips are just decoding for the, the keyboard controller, the USB drive, port 61, and then uh, the speaker as well. There's some speaker logic here. So, as you can see, I've got an expansion slot here, and this is not extended ISA or the 32-bit, or sorry, 16-bit ISA. Uh, what this is is my own custom expansion for my processor to plug into, and it provides uh, things like uh, interrupt 1, IRQ1, the uh, reset, the hold request for your, your DMA. That's why the DMA also has the expansion. So that's kind of the that's the the main board. Um, there's no memory on the main board, so I created a memory card, and this is my 64k memory card. So you've got 512k, and then another 128k, and then your ROM here, 32k of ROM, and then I've got a 32k RAM up here in a F0000. Um, it's actually not used with the current BIOS, but I was I use it with my BIOS. But it kind of gives you a little bit of a, a, a RAM space to use with the ROM. But if you did want to go with a bigger, uh, like a larger size ROM, you could change that out for another uh, ROM chip as well. This one's read only. The, the write pin is completely disconnected, but this one does have it connected. So if you do have byte alterable ROM, you'd have to watch out on that. The uh, processor card, um, I've been making the 8088-2s lately instead of V20s. 
They do cost a little more, but uh, it kind of gives you that more real experience. So the processor card, this just has your, uh, your latches for your address here and here. The center address lines are not latched A through uh, A8 through 15. Got your data transceiver here for your data bus. And then I've got a uh, decoding for your memory uh, read writes, IO read writes. And then a clock. Now this has got its own clock so that you can put whatever speed you want for your processor combination and not have it match the board. Most of them I put in a 24 megahertz crystal to run them at 8. Got our interrupt controller and a system timer, which is used for your speaker and your uh, timer ticks. Um, I'm going to jump over here to the V40 card real quick. So this can also plug in. As you can see, this is way more simplified than the 8088 because everything is built into the processor except for your address latch and your data transceiver. So that's kind of why there's the processor slot itself. I also have made a uh, 188. Uh, haven't had too much luck. It works, but it doesn't work. So let's just talk about the DMA controller real quick. So this is just the standard uh, 8237 DMA. It runs at, uh, you can say it takes the, the clock from the main board. So it's at 4.77 megahertz. And it's just got a little bit of decoding here and your address strobe for your upper address lines latches it here. And you also have your index register on there. So anyway, let me, uh, I'm going to grab the case real quick and I'm going to show it in the case. All right. So here it is in the case. Um, as you can see, like I was explaining, main reason why I stuck with 10 was so that you'd have the card slots line up with a, a bracket uh, slot here. But the three over here are uh, offset and that's for your cards to plug into. So I'll just plug those in. And in this case, they plug in just fine. Not sure if all cases they'll plug in or not. Uh, you know, they might hit up here at the, uh, the top here. Um, with the, uh, the mounts, it's fine in the card slot area, which is, or the main card slot area down here. It's pretty sturdy. The, uh, you got your mounting screws here and the tree on the top, but there's none on this edge. So there's, it's kind of, uh, got nothing to hang on to. In this case, there's just no mounting holes this far up. Um, so there's just nothing to, to mount to. I could extend the board, I guess, all the way to the end cost a little more but that'd be an option uh, I was thinking maybe there'd be take a little bit of metal strapping or something and create like a little bracket here for these to mount to but they they should hold they they hang in there pretty good biggest thing is they wobble you don't want them to rub into each other the uh, one big thing I just noticed which I thought would be a problem the uh, the power cord does not quite reach now, not all cases have the power supply down here at the, uh, I call this the bottom. Yes, yeah, bottom of the case. Some of them are up in the top. So if you are, if you are getting one of these, I would, uh, I'd recommend making sure your power supply is on this side. I'm just going to mount mine up in here. I'll just move it later. So anyway, I'm going to finish populating it with my, my, uh, cards and, uh, we'll get it booted up. One quick note, so on the uh, video card so far, the only issue I have had is my regular video card, which I normally use this one here. When I first turned it on, I was using this one because it's what I use for testing. The screen kept blanking out, not like crashing, but just going blank on me and then it would pop back on you know go off for a second or two so i was thinking well i mean that's definitely probably some of the length of the bus that's causing that but i plugged in this video card here this is a tvga uh 9000 uh this one's an a 9000a and i had no issues with this card so there's definitely room for issues with the length of the bus 
So that's something that needs to be uh, noted if, if you're having issues. So it took a little bit, but got all the other cards populated that I have. Um, actually got the tallest one in the front there, so got to hold a steady hand here. So I've got my video card. This is that TVGA 9000. Got a network card and a I.O. card, a serial parallel and uh, floppy. Looks like I got to plug the cord in still. And I did move my power supply around. I'm going to get a case where it sits up here. Got a zip tie it in place to hold it solid. But uh, turn it here and we'll get it booted up. Alright, so you can see it boots up just like the other systems. Um, I've been having a whole ton of trouble with it. Um, it's got to be the extended bus there. It's just got to be that much too long. So, this is it booting from the USB drive. I'm going to check the mouse here. Make sure the mouse works, which would indicate the serial port works. Alright, the mouse seems to work. Let's check the network. It seems to be connecting to the network. There we go. Got an IP address. So the mouse and the network card work. Been having all kinds of issues with the floppy drive. Let's uh let's give it a try. Um, I've been able to read them just fine. I just can't seem to boot them. So let's just go make directory new. See what happens here. See if it crashes with that. Let's see. Oh, so it, so it's reading and writing fine, but it's not booting for some reason. I have to look into that. I was playing with my floppy controller recently, trying to get a different drive to work. And I may have changed the setting and might need to double check everything on it. So I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to move the processor card and reboot it here real quick and see what happens. So I've moved the processor card to the second slot instead of the first slot. It is interchangeable with the, uh, the DMA controller. Got a boot disk in there. It doesn't want to focus here. So it's trying to boot, and this is what the uh, the floppy drive is doing to me. Let's see if it works. This is where it gets to every time and just kind of stalls. Floppy drives are slower, so you kind of have to wait and be patient with them. But I, I just don't think it'll ever come through. So anyway, that's kind of the uh, the overview of the uh, ten slot board. Uh, thanks for checking out my video today.